everybody welcome back to my channel today's video is super fun we are doing some homemade pizzas and y'all this video is in collaboration with my girls cat from southern farm and kitchen and the lovely shauna from the dickinson homestead she is back at it y'all so welcome her back to youtube i'll have both of their links in the description box below so make sure you go and check out them lovely ladies so i'm just making my pizza crust with the kroger brand pizza crust and i'm just making it according to the package directions to get everything ready to go We are each going to be sharing some super delicious pizza recipes with you guys. We love homemade pizza night in this house, so I thought this would be such a fun idea to share several different pizza options to kind of give you all some inspiration, pick and choose what you like. So for mine, I'm going to be making three different pizzas. I have got one is the pulled pork barbecue. Y'all know how much I love, we love our pulled pork around here. And then the next one is a kind of a play on the colossal cheese from Hometown Pizza. If you have a Hometown Pizza local to you, then you definitely know what I'm talking about. The colossal cheese is so good. And then the last one is a dessert pizza. And it didn't turn out the best, but I still wanted to share it. And I also want to give my little like tweaks on it of what I would do next. But it is a strawberry and cream pizza. So I hope you all enjoy this and let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start out with the colossal cheese. And like I said, this is a play on our favorite pizza that we get from hometown pizza. I don't know where all hometown pizza is, but it's local to us. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a container of, of ricotta cheese and I'm going to add in one egg. And then I got half of a package of that zesty Italian dry mix and then about a tablespoon of minced garlic. If you don't have minced garlic, you can use garlic powder, or honestly, you probably wouldn't need it at all because you have that packet, the, all the seasoning from the Zesty Italian dry mix, but make sure you have that egg in there because that's very important for it to bind together and it's not gonna be all runny. It's gonna make a nice um, gooey cheesiness. And then I'm also gonna add about a fourth of a cup of grated Parmesan to this as well. So I'm just going to mix this all together and then set it aside. So for this one, I decided to pull out my cast iron pan. I've done one of these before and we really enjoyed it. Um, it is just like an upside down pizza. So I kind of just did the same thing. I just took a ton of cheese. That's the one thing with this colossal cheese. You're going to use a ton of cheese. So I added a bunch of that Italian blend, some mozzarella, and then some more of that grated Parmesan. I did a good, good layer of that in the bottom of my well greased, make sure it is very well greased, um, cast iron pan. And then you're just gonna add in that ricotta mixture right on top of there, smoothing it out and making a layer. You're just building your pizza, but you're doing it upside down. <laughs> you could totally do this the right way, the right side up, um, and then, but you would just put your, your dough down and then put your marinara sauce the ricotta mixture and then top it with cheese and bake it in the oven that way you could totally do that we really enjoy these upside down pizzas so i did it this way so i just had my cheese and then i did the ricotta now i'm going to add on a good layer of the marinara sauce and then we will top it with our pizza crust So for whenever I do the pizzas in the cast iron pan, I do one package of the pizza crust. And so I mix two packages at a time. Um, 
as you've seen at the beginning and so I just took and cut that dough in half and then I just used that one half and then I put the rest of it back under the towel um, until I needed it for the dessert pizza but my tip I always give when I do homemade pizzas is use cornmeal don't use flour when rolling out pizza dough use cornmeal because it's not going to stick to your dough it's going to help with keeping it moving and not sticking but if you use flour then it's just going to add it's going to soak into your dough and make it dense and tough so use cornmeal it makes it nice and light it doesn't stick to the surface it's a great alternative so i'm just going to roll that out until it gets to the um the right size circle you need for your cast iron pan and then just plop that baby on top and pop it in a 425 degree oven until that crust is nice and golden brown and it is done Now I went ahead and put that in the oven and I'm going to go ahead and start on my second pizza. I put that one in a little early because it's thicker so it's going to take just a little bit longer to cook. Um, so I'm just doing the same thing with my dough. This one is the two pack. I always do, if I make a regular pizza, I always do two packs of the Kroger brand and I just roll it out until it gets to the size of my pan. And I just do the same trick with the cornmeal. I'm telling y'all that is a great trick to do with pizza dough. So this is one of our favorite pizzas to make and it is the pulled pork barbecue pizza this is inspired by mellow mushroom they have a funky q and y'all their funky q is so good we get it every time we go um, but theirs is the barbecue and it's chicken but we love we always have pulled pork in the freezer so we just always use the pulled pork so i've got my dough ready and then i'm just going to take my barbecue sauce you can use whatever your favorite is that is the sweet Valdea onion and you're just going to do a good layer of that barbecue sauce on the bottom of your dough and then we're going to put a little bit of some mozzarella cheese down then we're going to put our pulled pork and like I said you can also use chicken you're going to do a good layer of that and then we're going to finish it off with some uh, um, I like to do either the triple cheddar or the Colby Jack blend for this, like the funky hue. Um, I don't know, I just like the cheddar cheese with the barbecue. It just makes it taste really good. Um, but you can't go wrong with any kind of cheese on pizza, honestly. Pizza and cheese just kind of go together, y'all. <laughs> So this is definitely optional, um, but I always add some bacon, even if I do the chicken or the pulled pork, I always add some bacon bits just to give it a little crunch factor. And then another thing you can also do, if you like onions or peppers, you can chop you up some onions and peppers and throw that on there and bake it in the oven. Same thing, 425, um, just till it's nice and golden brown and all the cheese is melty and it's gooey and bubbly. Then for our last pizza, this is the dessert pizza. I'm doing the same thing with the dough like I did the other ones. This is just that other half of the dough that I made at the beginning. Then I'm just going to roll it out till it gets to the size of my baking pan that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a baking stone for this one. Because when you make three pizzas in one night, you run out of pans. <laughs> but I love using this baking stone. It makes it nice and crispy. So for this one, my inspiration came from this Nestle Toll House Morsel mix that um, y'all have been seeing in all the stores um, I just picked one up from Kroger and actually I got it on sale for 99 cents because I wasn't going to pay full price for it let's be honest but I got my inspiration from that so I kind of played on that 
And what's in that, it is the strawberry cream morsels and more. And so it had chunks of dried strawberry in it. It had white chocolate chips and it had graham crackers. Now the package on it says you can add it to cupcakes. You can bake it in some cookies. You can make cheesecake bars. So with that, I kind of played on that. So I rolled my crust out, put it on my pan, and then I have a block of cream cheese here that I have just softened. And I'm mixing it up, and then I'm gonna add in one egg and about two tablespoons of brown sugar. You can use regular sugar if you want. I just used brown sugar because it was right there. And then I'm just gonna take and mix that up really well. And then I'm gonna coat the bottom of my pizza dough with that, do a nice thin layer of that. And then I'm just gonna top it with that to Toll House uh, mix. I'm just gonna top the pour that on top of there and bake it in the oven. It was good. It didn't look pretty. I'm going to say that. You'll see in a second. It didn't look the best, but it tastes good. It had a nice, uh, like the sweetness of the strawberry and then the white chocolate and the cream cheese. It was really good. It wasn't too sweet, honestly, but I feel like you could totally play on this even more if you had like the jarred strawberry pie filling. You could put some of that on there as well. Um, a little bit of that pour it on that and then put that topping on top you could also cut up some fresh strawberries and put on there once it comes out of the oven I feel like you could totally play with this a ton more so that's why I left this in the video because I didn't feel like it was horrible we still ate it it was really good it just didn't look the best but you could totally add on to this um, like I said this inspired me to make this sort of pizza um, and so I hope it inspires you to think outside the box, think of something, um, you know, unusual that you wouldn't normally think that would be on a pizza, because you never know, it might taste good. This was pretty good, y'all. So whenever I pull out the pulled pork barbecue, I always do a good swirl of ranch. It is so good. The barbecue and the ranch, is just it's just so good together. So now we are going to flip over our upside down pizza. I have just got a little platter there and I'm just gonna take a knife and kinda make sure the edges around the cast iron pan are nice and loose. But y'all, this came out like butter. That's the good thing about having a really well greased cast iron is it's going to come out that way. Um, and so I just put the platter on it, flip it over, and I just let it sit there for a second um, to let it just kind of peel off on its own. With putting that cheese in the bottom of that pan, it's going to get nice and crusty. You know how like the whole chaffle, like keto thing is like the crunchy cheese? That's exactly what this did. It, it made that nice crunchy cheese on the outside. And it was nice and gooey on the inside between the crust and the crunchy cheese because of the ricotta. And oh, y'all, this was so freaking delicious. And here are all three of the pizzas when they're out of the oven there is the dessert pizza like i said it doesn't look the prettiest because the graham crackers kind of got a little burnt but y'all it tasted really good and it has definitely inspired me to make some more dessert pizzas and then we have the pulled pork one and that colossal cheese oh my gosh <laughs> this was so good we love us a homemade pizza night i really hope you enjoyed this pizza video don't forget to go check out my girls, Kat and Shauna, and I will have all their information listed in the description box so y'all can go check out them lovely ladies and go give them some love, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye, guys.